Hello, everyone. This week's parish is Parsha Bayera. Uh, this piece is actually based on what, something I read from Rav Bernstein online. He now posts these weekly uh, Mesha Chochma Divrei Torah. They're usually about three to four pages. Um, the Mesha Chochma is uh, first. The author of the Mesha Chochma, his, his name was Reb Meir Simcha of Dvinsk. It was a city in uh, in Eastern Europe. Actually, the Rokhachov Ragon also lived in that city, which might make you think that Finsk was this huge city. It was not as a very small city, and yet it contained these, uh, these massive gadolim. It was a huge slit for that whole city. Um, and Rabmir Simcha of Dvinsk wrote two major works. He wrote, at least, he wrote the Meshachachma, which is his perush on the Chomesh, and he also wrote the Or Sameach, which is his, uh, his work on Rambam, Rambam's Mishnah Torah. So, Rabbertstein presents these ideas from the Shachachma on a weekly basis, and this is the one he wrote last year. So it says Rav Bernstein, that uh, in Vayera we're introduced to this, uh, actually the longest conversation Avra, uh, on record between Avram and HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and God. And it's the negotiation that Avram has with God to to, to have a lower amount of, uh, of tzaddikim to be found in the cities of Stom and Amora and, and the rest in order to spare the cities. So Avram starts with 50, Negotiates with God down to 45, then to 40, 30, 20, and ultimately to 10. And with that, the, the, the conversation is over. Okay. Now, if, we're, if we were just to read this passage superficially, we would say, okay, you know, this seems like basic kind of negotiation, like Avram says this, God responds the same, and so on and so forth until we get to 10. But really, that's not so accurate. And if we're to look carefully at the Pesukim, we'll see this. Because if we start, let's say, at 40... Um, so it says, Yosef, oh, we're at chapter 18, verse 29. But Yosef would let the very love, right? Avram continued to speak to God. Right? Maybe there will be 40 there. So God responds, I will not act on behalf of the 40. So then, again, Avram goes and says, well, maybe 30. So, uh, so God responds, I will not act if I find 30. And yet God's tone changes when Avram goes down to 20 and to 10. For 20 and 10, what does it say? Vayomer lo ashchit ba'avur ha'esrim, and vayomer lo ashchit ba'avur ha'asara. So when it came to 40 and 30, God says, lo, lo ese, I will not act on behalf of the, th of the 40 and 30. When it comes to 20 and 10, God says, I will not destroy on behalf of the 20, and I will not destroy on behalf of the 10. What is the difference between acting and destroying? Because seemingly when God says, I will not act, that means that he won't destroy. Because God wants to destroy the cities. And to, for God to say, I will not act, means that God won't destroy it. So what's the difference? So it says the Meshachach, when God says, Lo ashchit, that means, I will, I will not destroy, but I'll still punish. As in, I won't completely annihilate them, but there will still be a reckoning, if that's what you want. There's going to be a punishment here, because they aren't completely saved. However, when it says, Lo ashchit, I will not act, that means I will not act at all. I will not punish them at all in the merit of these tzaddikim. Okay, so that works. Now, why is that? Because we see we start with 50, right? That's a minion for, for every city. And yet, and uh, and the Ibn Ezra says that matters of Kedusha require 10, right? 10 people. So we see, like, when you have 40 people, that means 8 people per city. Okay, 8 tzaddikim per city is still a majority if you're getting closer to the minion. How about 30? That's still six people per city. That's still pretty good. That's still a majority. And therefore, for six and for eight people per city, 40 and 30, lo ese, I will not act at all. There will be no punishment. Lo how about 20 and 10? Well, for 20, that means four people per city. That's not a majority. That's a minority. And for that, God says, you'll be spared, but not totally. There will still be a punishment. How about for 10? Now it's two people per city. So certainly, we're not going to say lo ese, but rather God says, lo ashchit, I won't destroy you totally, but you'll still be punished. So that theory works out great, except for one problem. If we go to verse 28, as referenced in directs us to, it says, Ulai yachzirun chamishimat tzadikim chamisha. Avram says, maybe out of these 50 tzadikim, five will be missing. Had ashchit v'chamisha at kula ir? Will you destroy the whole city, uh, like all the cities, for five people? So it says God, v'yomer, lo ashchit imem tzashem arbaim v'chamisha. Here, God says, I will not destroy if I find 45. What's going on? Now we have 9 out of 10. If God is going to spare the city completely, he won't act on uh, for, for anything if there are 8. And for 6, then all the more so God shouldn't punish the city at all if there are 9 tzaddikim. Right? So what is going on? What is behind this anomaly? That is the question we need to solve. 
So, as background information, there's an, exp there's an expression that Chazal used when it comes to the accounting that a person needs to give when, uh, when he dies and answers to the next world. And there's this expression that's called Din Fecheshwan, judgment and reckoning. Now, what's the difference between judgment and reckoning? Sounds like the same thing. So the Vilna Gaon comes and explains. Din is, uh, is what you need to account for, for all the negative things that you did. That is to say, there are certain negative things, those things you cannot do, that a person does. And therefore, you'll be liable for that. And that din, that is called din, and that is judgment. Okay, then what's cheshbon? What's the reckoning? So the reckoning is for all the positive mitzvahs that, that you could have done that you didn't do. That's how the Vilna God explains it. Din is, pun, is, a, is, is a judgment for, things, for the negative things that you did, that you shouldn't have done. And cheshbon are the positive things that you could have done that you didn't do. Because ultimately, a person has still sinned if there are things that he could have done that he refused to do. Just like when a person commits a negative action, uh, uh, a negative action, he has sinned. Those two things are, are equivalent. So the so uh, maybe not equivalent, but both of them are bad and both of them are sins. So the Mishnah Chochmah takes this concept further. What does the Mishnah Chochmah say? He says this element of cheshbon needs to be evaluated because. It's always a bad thing. If you have, if you have a, a positive, if you have the ability to do something positive and you fail to do it, that's no good. Okay, so let's just see this, uh, evaluate this circumstance. Let's say a person does an Avera. Okay, chas a person does an Avera. Now he needs to do the mitzvah of tshuva. Failing to do the mitzvah of tshuva is something that they'll owe cheshbon for, right? They fail to do this positive mitzvah. However, the reckoning is much more serious if a person failed to do tshuva on Yom Kippur. Because there, the whole day is dedicated towards this mitzvah of tshuva. So ref refusing to do a, to do tshuva on such a day is going to incur a much greater indictment because the, the possibility is there to do something greater. Now, turning our attention back to Stom with this concept, we, we see what's going on. That is to say, the people of Stom owed a two accounts. There's the din, all the negative things that they shouldn't have done and did anyway, and the cheshbon, that is to say, the positive things that they could have done that they refuse to do. And yet, even so, the merit of the tzaddikim will help them. If there are 40 people, then the eight tzaddikim will protect that city completely. There will be no action on, on uh, the part of God to punish. So too, if there are six, then God will punish, uh, will, uh, will spare from punishment uh, the city completely because of the merit of the six. But if that's true, then isn't the merit of the nine greater than the merit of the eight? The answer is yes, it is. However, the, the condemnation that the city deserves for having nine people and feeling to, to, to live up to the standard uh, obviates the, the, uh, the extra merit of the, uh, of the tzaddik. What do we mean? So the Gemara and Brachos, I think it's Mem Zayin, uh, Reverencein says, says that a person who completes a minion gets the, uh, gets the reward, the schar, for all the people in the minion. Now, like why? The answer is simple. Because without that tenth person, then the minion would never have achieved its status. And therefore, the fact that there was that tenth person, he completes the minion, and he's the one who's, who allows it to achieve its status, and therefore he gets, he gets the scar for all the people in the minion. Okay, so now that we know that, we can look at stone. What happened? You had nine people, uh, nine Siddiquim, in each city of the five cities. That means that now, the Cheshbon of every single person who was not a tzaddik in Stom is not only you fail to become a tzaddik, which is a bad enough cheshbon, but you fail to become a tzaddik and you 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 failed uh, you you uh, disrupted the ability for the city to achieve a minion of tzaddikim. If you had become a tzaddik, not only would you have become a tzaddik and added merit, you would have completed the minion. And therefore, the fact that that each individual person refused to do that added so much condemnation onto the city that even though they had the extra tzaddik, they had the nine instead of the eight, the extra condemnation far outweighed it, and therefore God changes from lo ese, I will not act at all, I will not act at all, to rather lo ashchit, I will not destroy, because now the, uh, the, uh, the dessert, you are more deserving of punishment, even though you have the extra tzaddik, because you each fail to become tzaddikim and to complete the minion. That is the lesson that we're taught from this duke in the psokim, beautiful, by the Meshach Chachma, and from this that we should all learn that it's important not only to avoid doing negative things, but to, but to be sure to do all the positive things that, that uh, come our way, and we should go seeking the positive. Shabbat Shalom.